So yesterday I posted a new video doing a capacity test with lithium iron phosphate and for some reason I had a lot of ignorant comments from people that do not understand how lithium iron phosphate works some of its characteristics or the literature surrounding this chemistry. So we're gonna list out some of these comments and we're gonna see exactly how these people are wrong. First comment is by Turbo2LTR. He says, how many charge cycles have you put this battery through? He says, you can't expect full capacity until the battery has been broken in. Nowhere in the literature have I ever seen that you need to break in a lithium iron phosphate battery. It's quite the contrary. When you have the first few cycles, you usually have over the rated capacity, not under. For some reason, people think that you need to break in a lithium battery. I don't understand where they came up with this, but it's completely false. Next comment by Chris Drake. Dude, if you're going to do tests, you need to fully charge them 4.2 volts per cell and discharge to two volts per cell. You've only partially charged these. 13.7 volts it says on your tester at 35 seconds instead of 16.8 volts which would be the full charge and you've not fully discharged them your tester cut out at 10.5 volts but six volts would be the real end so your 106 amp hour number is totally speculative and misleading Okay, first of all, you never ever charge lithium iron phosphate to 4.2 volts per cell. That's where electrolyte degradation occurs. You charge it to 3.65 volts per cell. That is standard on all of the data sheets for maximum absorption per cell. Next, the reason that it was at 13.7 volts is because the voltage settles rapidly with this chemistry. Shortly after you charge it, it will drop down to 13.7 for a four cell in series um, pack. So yeah, that's totally normal. You do not charge at 16.8 volts and then, and then expect it to stay there. This voltage settles quickly. Also, after my batteries are done charging, I put one supply on there and I reduce the current so I can top it off all the way until the high voltage disconnect of the BMS gets triggered. That is the best way and that's how I always get full capacity. Next, he was criticizing the 10.5 volts. That's typically when one of the cells is gonna hit 2.5 five volts. That's the low voltage disconnect. In some data sheets, you will see that the lowest voltage that you can drop these cells to is two volts, but that's completely pointless and you will still hit full capacity at 2.5 volts. Also, you do not want these cells at two volts per cell. In the literature for transportation studies for lithium iron phosphate, if you start at two volts, even for a week, you're gonna have permanent degradation. Going by the numbers, I think he just Googled this chemistry's name and he thought that those are the thresholds for pulling full capacity and that's absolutely false. I can actually have a absorption of slightly lower than this and still pull full capacity, but I don't think he understands that as well. It's because you have pretty much like a logarithmic curve capacity wise on the charge and discharge curve. So that last little bit doesn't matter much. You'll crank out maybe another one or 2%. Something else I saw in the comments is people mentioning the Pukert effect or constant. This does not apply to lithium iron phosphate. This is for lead acid batteries only. The Pukert effect does not apply at all. I saw at least like 10 comments stating that I should have taken that into account and the coulombic efficiency for my capacity test was wrong. They are wrong. It does not apply to this chemistry at all. Next confusing comment is by Marcus Adis. He says, rate of discharge has to be factored in also. Did you test at the current rate 20 hour that the battery amp hour rating was based on? First off, it's not at the 20 hour rate. That's for lead acid, specifically flooded cells, not lithium iron phosphate. In the literature, lithium iron phosphate is tested at 0.2 C. And we did below that, we did 0.15 C. And even with new cells, you can test at 0.8 C and pull full capacity. So I'm guessing that this person is just accustomed to lead acid batteries and does not understand this chemistry or other lithium chemistries. Will Burke, shouldn't the battery have been around 14.4 volts when you started the capacity test? It was at 13.7, which means it wasn't full, right? Again, the voltage settles with this chemistry, you guys. Please read this or do your own tests at home. I've covered this many, many, many times in my past videos. Next comment by Brian Watts. I would think that ripping any product apart removes any obligation from a supplier to accept it back for a refund? 
How does that make any sense? These are not the rated capacity. What you see on this box, this number, and what you get sell-wise are wrong. That's why I'm getting all my money back and I've done this before. I don't understand. I had at least like 20 comments saying, oh, why would you try to return it if you took it apart? It's because we're not getting the rated capacity, you guys. What do you think? And then a lot of people said that because it's a 105 amp hour battery for $400, you're still getting a deal. That is wrong. You can buy these cells for super cheap nowadays. I don't think people understand how cheap Eve cells are. You can buy 280 amp hour cells for around $400, four of them, okay, with shipping to your door. So yeah, this is not a deal, okay? You can still build your, pack, your own pack for much, much cheaper. Next, Jim Jenkins said that test for amp or watt hours is flawed. The low voltage cutoff on your inverter and or BMS would be part of the limitation. So first of all, that's why we use this inverter is because the low voltage disconnect is super duper low. What cuts off is the BMS and that's why you saw the voltage drop so quickly after the test was done. Um, there was some voltage still left in the capacitors that you will see on the screen when they are discharging. But yeah, when these FETs hit low voltage disconnect at 2.5 volts, and the test is completely done and you will pull full capacity. So yeah, this is why we use a BMS and that's why we top balance and that's why we cycle them the way we do. It's because we can pull full capacity every time. This person said voltage drop at the inverter. That is an issue when we're doing high C rate tests for like lithium titanate. But in this case at a 0.15 C, actually 0.12 C, um, you're not gonna have that issue with the voltage drop. Also the BMS cut off, it wasn't the inverter. Then we got a good comment from Motorized Bicycle Race. He understands how these batteries work and he made a lot of good comments. So refer to his if you guys need to learn about this stuff. And on top of my test results telling me that these are 105 amp hour cells, I have the exact same cell from other batteries. Okay, this is a 105 amp hour cell. And you can see it on the barcode, it states 105 amp hours and I've done capacity tests on this cell and yes, it is 105 amp hours. So now that we know that this is 105 amp hours and that this one tested at 105 amp hours and they look identical, look at this. If you ask me, they're pretty much the same cell. They have the same dimensions, the same weight. So the volumetric density and the specific energy are identical. And yeah, I've tested both of these cells and I get 105 amp hours. This one is from this battery and this is from another battery. So yeah, this is a 105 amp hour cell. But I want people to understand that when I do a test, I know what I'm talking about. I have the proper temperature, I have the proper cycling band with thresholds. Um, I understand the chemistry and how the voltage settles. I've read almost every paper on lithium iron phosphate. Okay, I tried to download every study I could and I read every single one before I started making these videos. Um, also, when I charge these up, um, I ensure that I hit high voltage disconnect and then I lower the current and I just trickle charge it for that last little bit. Um, so yeah, that's why I got 106 amp hours is because I know what I'm doing. Also, these cells were balanced. They were top balanced and I got the same voltage. And then when I discharged them, I checked the voltage and they cycled down together. If one of them hit it too low, like in the case of this grade B 120 amp hour aluminum case cell, which you guys can watch this video um, that I posted like a year ago, you will notice that one of them was bad and I caught it instantly. So yeah, I know how to do these tests. I've done it like a lot of times. So if you guys disagree with anything I said in this video, again, comment below. But if you do not understand this chemistry, please go back to my older videos. I'm trying to flame me in the comment section and say, oh no, Sonny, you're completely wrong. I've been working in batteries for 30 years. Um, you don't understand how these batteries work. You should do it at a 20 hour rate. And then I see everywhere in the battery literature telling me, to do a 0.2 C test at a specified temperature. Um, please substantiate your claims with evidence unless I'm going to disregard them or I'm going to argue back. Um, I like to educate people, but when you are arrogant and cocky, um, that's not very fair and I'm gonna come back at you with evidence to substantiate my claim. So anyways, this is a 105 amp hour cell. It's nothing else. My test results were correct. And again, watch my beginner videos. I cover all of this and much more multiple times in my older videos. So yeah, I will talk to you later. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.